Hi folks, Scott Sager with your RTC TV4. Well, it's springtime and uh, we've got some jackets for that spring weather that's coming up, but uh, we also want to kind of reach out to you folks to uh, let you know we are going to be airing uh, quite a bit of spring coverage for our sporting and non-sporting events this year. Wanted to bring Steve Stricker in. He's got some previews for you. So uh, just wanted to kind of let you know, kind of foretell what we're trying to do here at RTC for the uh, spring and summer coverage here. It has been a wild ride since August. It has. Uh, we've done almost 350 live sporting events on RTC TV4. Yeah. And we've uh, got a little bit of a break here. And <laughs> we it, get it, to breathe for a minute. Take don't a we? little deep breath. And uh, I actually kind of thought, you know, what do I do with my time now that I'm not right. doing five or six games every night? And so I've been going around to the uh, schools and talking to you know some of the coaches just whoever's available right just kind of you know sit down and you know recap the season from last year or talk about the spring season and Excellent. Uh, I was down at Winnemac the other day great yeah, I got to talk to some coaches down there yeah and I uh, got some nice uh, interviews and that's what we're going to put on here for you this afternoon excellent so what you're going to see right after you see our mugs is uh, some interviews some discussions over in the Winnemac area uh, Winnemac, you know, we weren't sure where we were going to go. We talked to some folks over there before we uh, lit them up. Dan Foster, the superintendent of Eastern Pulaski Schools, was, uh, I, he just really embraced the idea. And uh, then we brought you on in August, and we didn't know how quickly we could get any of these schools fired up, but um, you were able to, by the time we got to sectionals for football, you had all of our schools with crews, and we were covering more. Specifically to the Winnemac, uh, we had a gentleman step up, uh, Tim Gerhardt stepped up mm -hmm. over there, and uh, you folks know him and love him, of course, but Tim has just done a phenomenal job. Of course, I've uh, met with his family of recently. He's got some high school students. His daughters are uh, currently high schoolers. He's got a son in middle school. And it's a situation where the family is really embracing this whole concept to bring Winnemac TV to you through RTC TV4. So we look forward to what they're going to be able to do. But uh, when we look back, my goodness, um, many a night we had eight live games or light, eight live events streaming at the exact same time. And uh, it's hard enough for most companies to do one, and we were fired off eight. Yeah, we really were. We were uh, crazy busy there for a while. And uh, we got a chance to talk to the, the coaches. I, I went back and, and talked to Coach Barr Great. from the uh, football team, yeah. and, and uh, he was Actually, kind of glad that we didn't get going when we did, <laughs> until we did, because of, uh, it's like, you know, we really played a lot better in the second half yeah, of the they season. Did. So, yeah, they did. got a chance to talk to him. I got a chance to talk to Coach Hugler, uh -huh. the boys' basketball coach, and then uh, Coach Hook, yeah. the wrestling coach, and then uh, a couple of spring previews. I got a Good. chance to uh, talk to uh, Coach Belcher, the uh, softball coach. Excellent. And also got a chance to uh, talk to Coach Radabush. Who's the boys golf coach and also does the uh, PA? Okay. In in the gym, so got a nice conversation with uh, with those folks. Well, it takes a village, as they say, and uh, for us, it kind of takes a village too. We appreciate all the support, all the sponsors, all the viewers that we've had in the Winnemac area. It's been a great year for us. We look forward to a even better 2019-2020 uh, season. More coverage uh, across all the areas. Again. A lot of folks look at us for the sports, but we do so much more than sports. We're going to be bringing you city council meetings, county council meetings, school board meetings. We're going to be bringing club information, FFA information. Of course, we're in north central Indiana, and FFA is big. And so yeah. we're trying to tap in uh, just about everywhere we can to the schools and to the communities to get a spotlight on all the great things happening. Yeah, I am the the sports guy, yeah. but you mentioned FFA, and that does touch a nerve for me because uh, my daughter's all been involved in FFA. Yeah. Uh, McKenna is very involved with FFA, or will be when she gets into high school, sure. but uh, 4-H and, yeah. and all that stuff. So uh, definitely a, a big area yeah. for all of our schools uh, here that we cover. So yeah. looking forward to that coverage. Uh, we're going to get some coverage kicked off for you here this spring. We're looking at the 2nd of April. Mm -hmm. For our coverage to start for Over Winnemac, Winnemac right. yeah, yep. Uh, actually, going to kick off our our spring season, yep, uh, with a, uh, a game at Rochester at Fancer Field on the first of April, okay. and uh, you know this is all weather permitting. Yeah, that's and, the hard thing is is this is first Steve's first year and and a lot of my crew's first year in dealing with the spring weather and. Um, 
you know, March is just one of those things. It's just been so iffy over the years. I've canceled more events in the month of March, um, the outdoor sporting events, than we've ever covered. And it, it's truly weather permitting. So we're working on that from a technological standpoint. We're looking at fixed cameras that are waterproof so that we don't have to worry about all that extraneous gear that we have going out into the, you know, at the ballpark and then that rain cloud moves in. So we're working on those things. Spring this year is going to be a little bit of hybrid. We're going to have some automated things, some fixed cameras in place, but we'll also have some crews that are going to uh, basically do it the old fashioned way. And, um, you know, in both cases, our goal is simply to get you the coverage that you want to watch. Um, Winnemac, in particular, as we're talking here, we expect great things out of their softball team this year. Uh, their baseball team is got it's up and coming, uh, to put it mildly. And, um, you know, all the great things there. Now, there are some sports that are difficult to cover. Golf. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we don't have a blimp and I don't have cranes, you know, and I don't have ball trackers. We don't have a blimp else. yet. Yeah. We, we don't, don't have the blimp yet. yet. <laughs> I like that, Steve. But, um, you know, we're in a position where we want to interview the kids. We want to talk to the coaches. We want to highlight what we can about those events. Uh, one of my favorite events to go to as a spectator is track. Right. Very, very difficult for us to cover track because you have so many events happening at the exact same time. Uh, but we're working towards these goals, and we just want to encourage you to uh, watch. If you're a business out there, you know we've got the viewers. We are your hometown TV. Get your message out there. We can help with that as well. But uh, I'm going to kind of leave it to Steve to kind of round out this little bit of an introduction before we go into the previews and the reviews from Winamax. So more to say, Steve? Well, just uh, tune in. Uh, like I said, starting April 1st, we should have some coverage from Fansler with Rochester hosting Triton. And then uh, we got a couple games coming to you from Winnemac and, uh, starting April 2nd. Uh, softball, Winnemac girls softball taking on Morgan Township, which that ought to be a great game. Hopefully the weather cooperates with us. Morgan Township uh, ranked in the top 10 in Class 1A. Winnemac, like you said, looking to have a good season. And then we're going to just kind of follow through with that. We'll have some uh, some more softball, some baseball uh, coming your way from Winnemac High School, Winnemac, Indiana. So we Good. appreciate everybody for tuning in. Uh, we've got some new options for advertising that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So definitely get a hold of us if you uh, want to do some advertising or just sponsor your team. Uh, we, we were going to work with you however we can to help Absolutely. get you and get your name out there and like we said, it's all about the kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. bottom line, whether you're, you know, an athlete, whether you're FFA, whether you're 4-H, whether you're doing a concert, it's all about the kids. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, that's that's why we started this 10 years ago here in Rochester was to put a spotlight on those kids, to put a spotlight on the schools themselves, the faculty winning awards, the coaches um, winning awards, the band directors winning awards. We want to highlight all that. Um, we're very proud of North Central Indiana and the communities that we serve. And we want to you know, show people why we're so proud because yeah. we do great things here. We have great citizens. Um, we're building even greater citizens as we send these kids out into the world. Many, many of them are coming back to this area to work and live, and that's a great thing. We saw a trend, especially in the early 2000s, where it was an exodus and people mm -hmm. weren't coming back. We're happy to have them back, and we're happy to show this to you wherever you are. Um, I think the greatest accomplishment, you know, everybody liked to hear when we were live in 37 countries, or 37 states and 12 countries. Yeah. Uh, you can watch us just about anywhere on the planet. I appreciate all you do, Steve. It is a yeoman's work to get out there and make all this happen every day, and the connectivity, as I say, there's a thousand points of failure with every live broadcast, and we're daring enough to go live <laughs> with eight of them at a time, um, and we, we expect more. Um, I don't know how much expansion we'll do in the next 12 months, but um, a lot of great things have come out of this past year, and I can't be grateful enough to you, the viewer, to my staff here at RTC, and to everyone who's been a part of this. Um, it is, as I said at the beginning, it takes a village, and everybody's really jumped on board. So thank you for your support. Enjoy these interviews here with Steve Stricker over at Winnemac High School. We'll see you next time here on RTC TV4.
Hey, so we're uh, here this afternoon at Winnemac High School and talking to the varsity softball coach, uh, Jenny Belcher. And uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what we got coming up here with the uh, Winnemac Lady Warriors for softball season. Oh, well, we have uh, a pretty good nucleus coming back. We have um, one senior with Jada Collins, and then we have um, some returners, some kids who have started for us. Um, some returning juniors would be um, Kelsey Crawford. She'll pitch for us and, and play some first base on defense. And then uh, we also have uh, juniors, uh, Blake Bailey in the outfield. Um, she's a solid outfield for us and, and a speedy player. Will probably play some short game for us. And then uh, um, our other returning junior starter is Alexis Grove and she'll be at shortstop for us. We have some sophomores that got some uh, varsity experience as freshmen. Um, we have Aubrey Gearhart, um, Emily Rausch, you guys had a great season last year. You guys play in a uh, tough conference, obviously, with the returning state champ, Pioneer. Uh, talk a little bit about the challenges that you face through your conference schedule. Uh, Pioneer, as you mentioned, they're definitely up at the top. Everybody's going to be chasing them. Um, you know, they were state champs, as you said, last year and, and didn't lose much of anything and, and are just coming back real solid. So uh, they're the ones to get. Um, Knox has a good nucleus coming back, I think, as well. So um, just all in all, our conference is, is typically solid inside and out with lots of teams. Gives you a lot of good experience when you get into the sectional and uh, playoff times. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, we also got in a Twin Lakes tournament this year, which hopes to do the same thing. Hopefully we'll be able to see some, some good opponents in that tournament to get us ready for the end of the season, too. All right, I know you got to go. You got softball practice coming up tonight. We're going to try and get out there and get uh, several of your games this year. And uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. All right, so back here talking to the boys' varsity coach, uh, Coach Hugler. And uh, Coach, you guys had a, uh, a really good season. Probably didn't end quite the way you wanted to, but uh, great season. You guys had some uh, really big wins on the year. And, and uh, talk a little bit about uh, your season. Well, we finished the season 18 and six. Uh, we were six and one in the conference, and uh, we were co-champions of the Hoosier North Athletic Conference. Uh, we tied with LaVille. We're very proud of that accomplishment. Um, we had some big wins. Uh, you know, we beat Plymouth during the season. Mm -hmm. uh, we also were able to get Marquette at home in a very exciting game. That was a regular season game, though. I wish we'd got him in the sectional. Uh, we had a tough battle against Logansport. They ended up beating us. A few possessions here, we could have got that. And then, uh, you know, we had some great battles, uh, some conference games with Knox and, and some other teams. So, you know, we had a good season. Uh, we lost some tough games. We felt like we were in every game uh, that we were in. Uh, in the sectional game against Marquette, we did fall behind quite a bit, but we did battle back. I give our guys a lot of credit. Uh, we've got five seniors that were, were – uh, you know, I'm going to say goodbye to, we're going to miss them. They're great kids. I mean, they're good ball players, but they're even better people. So uh, it's been an enjoyable year. Talk about your, uh, just a little bit of a quick preview of what you're looking for for next season. Well, we, we've got two returning players that have actually uh, accumulated a lot of varsity minutes. We've got Will Larkin, Calvin's younger brother. Will is a junior. Uh, he averaged right around 14 points per game this year. He's a competitor. Uh, he's going to you know, get in the gym a lot this summer. And uh, also Tyson Johnson. Tyson Johnson started a lot for us this year, as I alluded to earlier, a great defensive player, but he's also a great offensive player with the ball and without, without the ball. I think the ball is going to be in his hands a lot next year. Um, you know, I, I think coming back, you know, in, this, in addition to those guys, we have some other guys that have some varsity experience, but not a lot of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, some guys that we're going to be looking towards, I think, early next year will be Carson Bennett. Uh, he was injured uh, early February in a Logansport JV game, but uh, uh, he, he's an inside-out player. He's got a motor. He can run, get up and down the floor. He's worked on his left hand. He's gotten physically stronger. So hopefully he can step up. And, and a couple other guys, uh, Patrick Kiefer, uh, he got some valuable minutes in the North Newton game in the sectional, uh, scored a few buckets throughout the season. He's a good inside-outside player as well. And then Daniel Caston may be one of the uh, – uh, most athletic kids we have returning. He, he, he's a good shot blocker. Uh, he's a good golfer, too. But we need to get him in the gym some as much as he likes to be on the golf course in order to uh, you know, work on his skills. But those guys, along with uh, some younger guys, there'll be some other ones. Uh, you know, we got a couple juniors that played a lot of JV this year and dressed a little varsity at times, uh, Shaden May and Jared Parrish. Uh, and, and they'll be pushing for, for some minutes. And they're, they're, I, 
You know, as long as they put in time in the summer, they'll, you know, they want to improve their skills. And, and like I said before, we got some other sophomores. We got Trent Fox, Braden Lynch, and uh, those are some sophomores. And uh, Russell Compton's a freshman that played some for us on varsity. And uh, you never know. It seems like every year there's somebody that steps up that maybe you don't expect. So, you know, that's a challenge to some of those other guys out there. All right, so we're joined now by the varsity football coach, Craig Barr. And uh, Coach Barr, we didn't get quite the full season in uh, broadcast terms, I guess, with you guys. But we got to do several games, actually some of the road games with uh, you guys playing at Pioneer and at Culver. But uh, we did get on the air with the uh, West Central game, and then we covered all the uh, remaining games after that. So talk a little bit about your season last year. You guys ended up 5-6. and six. Uh, but you've got a, a young team and uh, a good nucleus coming back. Well, I'm glad you guys started when you did because the first part of our season was kind of ugly. So uh, we started out in one and four, and um, you know we played some pretty good competition those games with Pioneer, Knox, and Laville, and um, and then we we had a uh, a big influx of young youth coming into our program this year and. About mid-season, about week five, we made some changes and um, moved in a freshman quarterback and some of our younger kids started to develop a little bit and you get six weeks of practice under their belt and we ended up winning five of our last seven games and things started moving a little bit better towards the end of the year. So, uh, so yeah, your timing was really good to win and get started because <laughs> some of those games are ugly against um, Pioneer and Knox weren't the greatest to start the season. Well, we, we did all the Pioneer games, and there was a lot of those games for the other teams that weren't real good. Uh, let's talk about that freshman quarterback because he has ties to us, uh, Russell Compton. Uh, his dad, Chad, is, uh, does the camera work for us for our Winnemac crew, does a great job on the camera. So uh, you got him into the starting lineup there about the fifth game of the year, and uh, I got to see the first game that he did because we were up at Culver getting our crew going up there, and uh, very impressive. Well, it's funny because he took over, you know, and it's always, you know, I'm a former quarterback myself. And um, I, when you change quarterbacks in a small community, it's always a pretty significant um, issue and topic of conversation. But Russell made me look good in that decision. He was for his first eight passes he threw against Culver. All eight were completed. Three of them were for touchdown passes. And um, so he, he got off to a pretty, pretty good start of his high school uh, starting career. And then, you know, we came back and won a good ball game for them. And, and Chad, it, it, Russell's a good kid. He comes from a good family with Chad in April. And, um, and it doesn't surprise me. He helps during basketball season, too. So, uh, yeah, we, we got a bunch of young kids returning next year. And, um, you know, they're just getting – uh, got a little bit more maturity as they went throughout the season. Um, that freshman class was is the largest class to come through our building um, in a number of years, in both just guys and girls in general. Um, and they were under, they lost one game in middle school, I think, in football in their in their two years. And um, so the future is bright for those kids and our program in the next few years. Well, really looking forward to getting uh, a full season of Winnemac football on the books for you guys next year. Uh, the thing, going back a little bit to, to Russell, Culver game was his first game. I was doing that game. I would have never guessed, as I was kind of paying more attention to what was going on on the Culver side, I would have never guessed until I actually looked at the roster after the game that he was a freshman. I mean, he just his poise and uh, you know maturity is just really, really uh, high. <laughs> it's there are some poise, and maturity, and sometimes it's just you know being young, young and naive is sometimes <laughs> a good way to go through things to get started too. You know, and then as I as you progress through the year, you know, you start to you know coach some things up and change a few things i'm thinking i don't want to mess with any of those things right there being young and naive is a good way to go at that point in time and then we'll work on that in the off season but um yeah he jumped in and did a nice job for us as, and you know he had some people that uh as a quarterback that had some help tyson johnson 
Um, turned into being all Logan Land receiver, and he's a 6'2 athlete as a receiver. And Jared Heaton's another receiver outside set school record for catches, um, most catches in a game later in the year. And uh, so he had he had some help. Jeb Smith set a uh, record this last year for catches and so forth. So um, there's a lot of positives to go. That Russell had some some tools to work with also. So you, you mentioned Jeb Spith. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of those seniors. You know, you're, you're going to be losing him. You're going to be losing Kyle Chumley. Talk about some of the seniors you're going to be saying goodbye to uh, at the end of this uh, school year. Well, Jeb has been um, has been a three or two year starter. This is uh, my two years that I coached him. He was a starting quarterback, and and to his credit, he he moved from quarterback to receiver. And he was a little bit reluctant, <laughs> to say the least, to start with, but. Um, as an end result, he did a fantastic job. He, he was he was probably our best offensive weapon going into the year. He was our leading receiver. Um, he played a little quarterback in some situations for us. He he threw the ball. He rushed the ball. Caught it. Um, I think he was second in, in most catches on a season this year, and um, just did a great job of transitioning to things. Kyle Chumley was our leading rusher. He was a three-year starter for the program and started the last two years as a. Uh, as a running back for us and he's going to move on to play at Manchester next year and um, his his future is bright for what he's doing because he's just a hard-working kid who's probably our strongest kid in the program this year and did a nice job for us. Um, Dylan Fox was a linebacker and um, running back for us. He was a um, our most valuable defensive player and an all-Logan Land player also. Um, he did a very nice job for us defensively as well as a fullback for us. And um, Chase Pidell was an offensive lineman for us that played some offensive and defensive line. So talk about uh, moving into next year uh, numbers-wise. I know we talked, you've got some, uh, some younger kids, you know, that are really stepping up. Uh, numbers looking uh, good for next year? Yeah, our numbers, um, we had in the mid mid to upper 30s last year and we just had some call out meeting last week and um, right now we're about the mid 40s um, so that would be a great number that will drop off um, between now and then but you know if we could have 40 40 kids next year because it's I mean football is tough this you know you got to do some marketing and you know we've we've tried to sell the program and do some things so so yeah we've got around 40 and we just had a weightlifting competition last friday um, we invited north uh, john glenn and south central down and had some had some good numbers produced in the weight competition um, a lot of kids set um, personal records for weightlifting and stuff so our kids are progressing um, you know we we said we've got some young kids that are making some progress. Um, one of the kids that uh, we talked about, Russell, earlier, one of the other kids is um, it's going to be a force in our conference is uh, Logan Schultz. The Schultz name is pretty familiar oh, to, yeah. to oh, anybody yeah. that's going to turn on this TV yeah. uh, and listen to this area. And I've, uh, He's a 6'5", 260-pound freshman that uh, broke his ankle in week four uh, against against Judson is just now kind of getting back at it um, to full health. But um, we've challenged him to be the best Schultz has come through here. <laughs> and that's, that's a pretty hefty yeah, challenge yeah. starting going back to Troy. Um, there's some pretty good Schultzes that have come through here. But uh, he's an avid weightlifter and has done a great job for us so far. And, um, you know, we've got, we've got some couple kids coming back next year. There'll be seniors that um, are doing a good job. Coy Field, uh, Gabe Townsend. Um, our two kids have kind of been leading us from a senior class, and um, you know they may not that freshman class may be have a lot of the talent stuff, but those upper class would have to set the tone and um, example, work ethic, weight room stuff, and accountability and dependability stuff for the rest of those young kids to follow. We're uh, back here at Winnemac High School with Scott Radebush, the boys golf coach, and uh, also the PA announcer here at Winnemac. Uh, First off, uh, thanks for everything you do. I, I know you guys, you gave us a huge shout out there at one of the games, and we really appreciate that. Yep, no problem. You guys do a great job. You get a lot of opportunities for people that can't watch the games to come in and watch them, and and I think the guys who do it do a good job, and they're really into doing it. And I and I and I think it's all good for uh, you know the basketball, Indiana basketball, and you know for the people that couldn't be able to see them or they're on vacation or the snowbird stuff like that. Which you know I think it's all good. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about the reason you're here, uh, your boys' golf team. Um, I think this is uh, my 10th year as the coach, and we've had some pretty good teams over the years. I would say we're a um, pretty big fish in a small pond. There's no class system in golf, so when we get down to the regional, we got to go up against the you know Zionsvilles and Carmels and stuff like that. But we've had some pretty good golf teams over the years. I don't think this will be any different. I think we're a little deeper. We've actually got 18 kids on the team, so and that's by far the biggest uh, golf team I've ever had. So Calvin Larkins will be play number one, and uh, and Danny Caston number two, and they should um, compete off of each other pretty good. Uh, Calvin shot even par at Mystic Hills last year in the um, in the um, conference championship so he was conference champion last year in golf and this year in basketball he was most you know most valuable player right, right in the basketball right. yeah. conference so maybe he can back that up with another one this year in in golf and uh um you know so danny uh Kasten's right behind him and and you know maybe just as good some days or better it just depends so it'd be nice that they'll they'll um you know use each other um to compete against we've always had several players in our team that the other guys could emulate their swing mm -hmm. you know what i mean a lot of teams don't have that luxury and that is really nice so we've got guys that really know what's going on really know about the swing um, we break them up with the other kids and we give them the opportunity to help coach you know what i mean because they can they can they can help the other kids maybe even better than i can at times by relating better to them you know what i mean so but but i'm excited we've got um uh, you know, the other guy I should mention is Will Larkin's come a long way since he's been a freshman. He's a junior this year, and he'll probably play three for us. Wilson Smith's a senior. He's been playing. He shot 39 the other night in that 90 mile an hour wins yeah. Thursday night. Um, so that was pretty good. My son Jackson Rodebush, he's a freshman, and and I expect um, you know some pretty good things out of him. He's been playing for quite a while and been some tournaments, and and um, he shot 38 the other night, and and I'm hoping that continues. Uh, we've got a lot of other guys out there, Ethan Messer and, and Reese Sutton and, and um, you know, I've just got a lot of guys, Jacob Bennell, uh, Carter Hedinger, I could go on and on and on. You know, all these guys could compete. they got nice golf swings, so, so we're excited. Well, I've just been kind of rolling this number through my head as, as you've been talking, 16, 17 kids. 18. 18 kids. That's a huge number, isn't it, for a golf team? Huge. 12 was a huge number before. Yeah. <laughs> we only have 12 golf bags. Lucky we didn't throw the other ones away that we had from, <laughs> from other years. So, um, yeah, and it's all good. You know, I've had a lot of people tell me, well, you're going to have to make some cuts. You're going to have to do this. And I, you know, we want more golfers in the world. I'm not going to cut anybody. <laughs> We're going to teach them, teach them how to play. They may never see any varsity time or anything like that, but they, they may pick the game up and, you know, play with their dads in the future and, and you know, make it a lifetime sport. So that's what we're after as much as anything. Well, you normally see the uh, golf team roll up in one of the smaller buses. You guys are going to have to take the full-size bus to the tournaments. No, no, <laughs> I hope not. There's 14 maximum in there. We've not gone over this yet. I uh -huh. we have to go over with my AD and talk a little more about it. But I, but I still want to take the smaller bus. So, so we'll, that's some decisions that need to be made yet. <laughs> So JV, do you have uh, some some uh, course time for some of those guys? Yeah, there's there will have. Um, it all depends on the other teams, you know what I mean, and how many guys they have. If we can get a JV meet in and stuff like that, um, there's some invitationals, some JV invitationals that we've been invited to, and I may try to get into a couple of those. Our problem is getting another coach that can take them that day because it it conflicts with a meet we're having already. So yeah. so, but I'd love to if I can get that done. That we're working on it. So and then another thing we do too is uh, we we try to get some middle school players get get in a few middle school meets we set them up ourselves we uh, there's an invitational over at Marion we get in every year and and um, if we can get them coming in as a freshman at least having you know a little more of a clue than than starting as a freshman you know it makes a huge difference well it's it's a good problem to have having too many I yeah. guess it's it's a good thing um, so I don't know a whole lot about when at golf where do you guys uh, call home uh, Moss Creek. We play at Moss Creek. Uh, we do a lot of meets at um, at uh, Pond View, but Mystic Hills is where a lot of our guys have practiced and grown up because their grandma owned it. We've had a lot of Pews and Larkins on the team over the years, and and um, but this year it's going to be closed. I think they're redoing it. Uh, Ursay bought it, and um, we're hoping that um, they make it a nice place to play in the future for us. So, so but not this year. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, again, for uh, all the stuff you do with the uh, PA announcing and, and uh, best of luck to you on the uh, course this uh, spring. Thank you. Appreciate that very much.
wrestling coach uh, Cody Hook and uh, we got to cover a couple of your uh, wrestling matches this year and you guys had a really good year. Yeah, we were happy. Uh, one of our team goals was to win conference. It was something that we had set out to do at the beginning of the season. We knew that we had to fill the roster to do so, and that's been a kind of a struggle for us the last couple of years. Uh, but we were able to do it this year, fill all the 14 weight classes, and it came together at the right time. And so that team component was really, we were really happy with winning the conference title. We were hoping to wrestle a little better at sectional, but uh, out of sectional and regional and semi state, we had two going to semi state Jason Tankersley and Jake Armstrong. And then uh, Jake Armstrong, our senior captain, was able to make it to state for the second time in his career. So individually and team, we were happy with the results. Yeah, it's always good when you can uh, still be going when everybody's down at Banker's Life and uh, really uh, a great season. So you guys won the conference, uh, which is, you know, a pretty big accomplishment in itself, right? Yeah, we were happy. Again, um, you know, numbers have been dwindling, unfortunately, for wrestling. So the kind of name of the game right now is filling weight classes. So we had, you know, somewhere between nine to ten freshmen in the lineup throughout the, the season. So now the next step is obviously developing them into better wrestlers. So. So uh, looking forward then, coming back for next year, you, you're going to have a lot of those guys back? Yeah, we're losing a lot of good leadership. We're losing Carter Henninger and Jake Armstrong, who've been in the lineup for their all four years of their careers. So it's going to be tough to replace them, but we have a lot coming back as well. Uh, nice program. I, I heard you talking to, uh, to Tim at uh, one of the basketball games and and you guys have got some uh, some good things going down in the middle school as well right yeah so we have warpath for younger kids well actually all all ages but we have warpath that we started a few years ago and we're starting to see the results of having that program available to them um so we're starting to see you know kindergarten through fifth wrestling and then obviously middle schools had a lot of success as well so yeah we're, we're happy top to bottom right now all right. Well, thanks for taking some time with us. I know you got a lot going on. You said you're uh, coaching uh, middle school track. Yep, yep. So everybody, and we've talked about that with all of our crews, you know, everybody wears multiple hats. And uh, so you got another hat to put on here after we get done here. So thanks for taking some time with us. All right. Thank you.